Hola, artistas. Welcome back for this week's art lesson. Antes de comenzar, quería enseñarles algunas de las obras de arte que recibí esta semana. Remember artist James Rizzi with his lively cityscapes? Well, let's take a look at some paisajes urbanos created by some BMPV students and friends. Here we have our kindergarten artist friend Solomon again. Looks like he's in his art studio, y miren como de grande hizo su paisaje urbano. He used the space on his paper so well. Great job, Solomon. Aquí tenemos a Josiah, de segundo grado, que también está en su estudio de arte. Look at how great of a job he did on his cityscape. Each expression on each building is different, and I notice where he did a bit of blending as well. ¡Qué gran trabajo! Now here's a person you all should recognize. That's right, it's Principal Bustillo. Look at how beautiful her Paris-inspired cityscape is. Su inspiración para este paisaje urbano de París surgió de cuando vivió en París por dos años mientras estudiaba. Beautiful work of art, Miss Bustillo. Our last Rizzi-inspired cityscape comes from another friend that some of you might recognize. She is in sixth grade and attends Kenmore Middle School in Arlington, Virginia. If you don't know her, this is Eliana, y ella es la hija de la directora Bustillo. Notice the different heights and shapes of her building. Fantastic use of space. Y el fondo azul realmente complementa el colorido del paisaje urbano. Ahora tengo una obra más de arte para mostrarles, but this one was from our first week's video lesson on being thankful. This work of art comes from one of my personal friends who lives in New York. Her name is Maya. She is in kindergarten and goes to Harley Avenue Primary School in Huntington, New York. She wasn't able to print the handout, but look at how beautifully she drew her own frames and drew her pictures of what she's thankful for, which include cheeseburgers, her dad, the neighbor's two dogs, and her mom. Gracias por compartir, Maya. This goes to show you that anyone, no matter your age, could create something beautiful. Thank you all for emailing me your pictures of your artwork. Sigan creando! Now, let's get to this week's lesson. This week, we're going to discuss portraits, retratos. A portrait is a work of art such as a painting, drawing, or photograph of a person, especially one depicting only the face or head and shoulders. Un retrato es una obra de arte como una pintura, dibujo o fotografía de una persona, especialmente una que representa solo la cara o la cabeza y los hombros. Nuestro artista inspirador para esta lección de retratos es Pablo Picasso. Picasso was born in Spain on October 25, 1881. His father was an artist, art professor, and museum curator, and he started teaching art to Picasso when he was seven years old. La primer palabra de Picasso fue lápiz, which is the Spanish word for pencil. This was Picasso's first painting. La completó cuando tenía solo nueve años. We're going to take a look at three of Picasso's styles. Vamos a ver tres estilos de Picasso. Number one is realism, realismo. Number two is cubism, cubismo. And number three is Picassoism, Picassoismo. Empecemos con realism, realismo. El realismo es el movimiento o el estilo de representar las cosas como son en la vida real. In realism, the artist represents things as they actually are in real life. This was the style that Picasso preferred to paint in when he started his art career. At the age of 15, Picasso finished this painting titled The First Communion. Este es un retrato muy conocido que representa a su padre, madre y hermana.
Now let's take a look at cubism, cubismo. Cubism is a style of art that uses simple geometric shapes, such as squares, triangles, rectangles, etc. This makes things look abstract. Abstract means art that does not attempt to represent reality. Es todo lo contrario del realismo. Can you find some geometric shapes in these portraits? ¿Puedes ver algunas formas geométricas en estos retratos? Lastly, let's take a look at a style I like to call Picassoism, Picassoismo. Okay, so this isn't officially a style of art, but it certainly is one that Picasso invented. In reality, Picassoism is a type of cubism and Picasso led the way in transforming traditional cubism to this style of portraiture. You can still see basic geometric shapes, but you also see organic or freeform shapes. Se ven formas orgánicas. Las características de las personas en los retratos están en diferentes lugares. Facial features are in different places than they would normally be in. I think this is what makes this style of art so fun. And before Picasso, no one was really painting in this style. So here's our objective. Aquí está nuestro objetivo. We will create a portrait or a self-portrait in the style of artist Pablo Picasso. Vamos a crear un retrato o un autorretrato al estilo del artista Pablo Picasso. Now remember, we've already talked about what a portrait is, which is a picture of a person. A self-portrait is a picture of the artist created by him or herself. Un autorretrato Es una imagen del artista creada por él mismo o ella misma. Here we see some self-portraits Picasso created in realism, cubism, and what I like to call Picassoism. You'll be choosing the style you would like to do your portrait or self-portrait in. To begin, gather the following materials. Reúnan los siguientes materiales. Paper, papel, pencil, lápiz, permanent marker, marcador permanente, crayons, crayolas, washable markers, marcadores lavables, paintbrush or q-tips, pincel o q-tips, cup with water, taza con agua. Yo les voy a demostrar cómo hacer el estilo de Picassoismo, pero pueden elegir hacer cubismo si quieren. So select between Cubism or Picassoism and let's begin. Comencemos. I'm starting with a permanent marker so you can see my lines, but you may want to begin with a pencil in case you make a mistake. You'll be able to erase it. Start by drawing a big shape for the head. Dibuja una figura grande para la cabeza. I'm going to do a freeform shape. Si estás haciendo cubismo, dibujarías una forma geométrica para la cabeza. Add facial features such as eyes, nose, and a mouth. Necesitamos ojos, nariz, y una boca. You can draw them wherever you'd like as it's an abstract portrait. Add other details as well. Recuerda, tú eres el artista, so make it unique. Once you're done with your drawing, it's time to add color. Vamos a añadir color. You could begin by using crayons. I suggest you color the small things and don't forget to blend similar colors Coloreen las cosas pequeñas y no se olviden de mezclar colores similares. Why? Well, it makes your artwork look much better, silly. So why not?
Now, using washable markers, draw a thick line around all your big shapes. Dibuja una línea gruesa alrededor de todas las formas grandes. This is where we'll get our paint color from, so make sure you have a nice thick line. Asegúrese de tener una línea gruesa. Get your cup of water and your paintbrush or a Q-tip and gently rub the marker and bring the color to the center. Lleva el color de marcador al centro. Don't forget to email me your pictures. No olviden de enviarme sus fotos por correo electrónico. Until next week, adiós.